Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. It's been a while since we spent any time with the TiVo Flash, so we're going to spend some time today. So you may remember from when we unboxed the TiVo Flash that we had a broken Y-axis limit switch. So the limit switches on this are not mechanical like most. They're these little sensors, which are inductive, I believe. And this sensor was constantly illuminated. So it means it always thought that there was something directly in front of the sensor. Uh, so as a result, you wouldn't be able to say home the Y because it would think it's already at home. You could have worked around that, but instead we chose to contact TiVo and we got a replacement sensor for this. To replace that sensor, we had to remove the entire uh, board assembly from underneath the uh, bed of the printer. And on that previous video as well, I had some difficulty getting this entire unit out. So we had loosened or removed the four screws on either side here, and then you had to loosen the screws on the middle 4040 rail on the one side to, uh, to allow it to slide out. Once we got that out, we replaced the sensor, which was just unplug and plug the new one in. This model is fully loaded, so this came with the dual uh, Z-axis lead screws. It came with a BL touch, which is directly behind the nozzle on the hot end assembly here. And it has the Trinamic, the TMC 2100 drivers. Uh, so it is virtually silent. And much like the TiVo Tornado before it, it's got a 110 volt AC heated bed. Um, this particular printer did not come with a spool holder, so I stole one off of an Ender 3. Uh, and today we're gonna do, finally, our first test print on this. So I've sliced up an XYZ cube, just something simple to test the printer. And I've obviously loaded in the filament all the way into the hot end. And this takes a full size SD card. So instead of the little micro slot, I slid that in the front and I hit print from SD. Now in my startup G code, I included a G29 after a G28. So I home all axes and then G29 does auto bed leveling. So the center was the uh, homing of the Z. And now I think it's going to do a 4x4 with the BL touch and uh, level, level the bed with the ABL sequence and then it should start to print. It's pretty quiet, like if you've heard something like uh, say an Ender 3, definitely makes a lot more noise than this uh, and that's definitely due to the trinamic drivers and the fans are awfully quiet on this machine too. I'm just doing a purge line down the side. And then with any luck, it'll go near the center, start the cube, and we'll kick off the time lapse. All right, so we're back. It's about 23 minutes or so later. I'll just shut this off. It's done cooling down. And we have a cube. So it might be interesting to see how the footage for the uh, time lapse turns out because the jerk on this printer is set extraordinarily high. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's above 20. And I remember it being high on the TiVo Tornado as well. Um, the acceleration seemed pretty quick, and I mean, it made quick work of this cube. Uh, but that resulted in a lot of kind of shaking of the table and of the printer itself. So I'll probably be turning that down first thing. Um, aside from one layer, it seems, I have a exceptional looking cube. Uh, the top layers are perfect. Very good bottom layer, uh, you know, the ABL did its job uh, and I just kind of hit print and, and walk away. So, uh, you know, between the silence and the co overall construction, if we put aside kind of the initial quality issue we had with the sensor, overall, I'm pretty impressed. Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more content and leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you'd like to see on any of the printers you've seen here or any helpful tips and tricks you'd like. Thanks for watching.